as the the most important policies like EEO training, CEPA, stuff like that. We started doing that training already. So that's happening. That policy was actually updated. I think it was 2014 is the date on that mm -hmm. policy. Um, so that training is already happening. As far as the rest of the handbook goes, we were like some of those policies we don't really need to train on. Like, um, like for instance, we just put out a new dress code. Mm -hmm. We um, we worked on that. That was something that we wanted to get out at the same time as the handbook, but we decided to expedite it because of the summer, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but like some of the policies are just like, okay, here's what you can and cannot do with city equipment. Um, we're going to require that people acknowledge that they received those policies. So they're going to acknowledge that they received the whole handbook, but we weren't planning to train on all of it. Um, a lot of the stuff is going to be left up to the division directors, department directors, supervisors to um, make sure that their employees are aware of and, and for them to enforce. I think there's room for some discussion, though, about if there are points that people need to be citywide refreshed on, maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's good to yeah, we can know, definitely elevate talk about that, that, escalate that. Mm -hmm. um, also, regarding management, you know, throughout the city, uh, what role does the law department play when it comes to like maybe preemptive action with like habitual offenders uh, in terms of making a course correction with any behavioral issues or staff issues? You know, is there, uh, do you advise HR in those situations, like what they should do? And is it up to them to basically like eat their vegetables and do it? Or like what? what's the relationship there. The latter is true. We um, <laughs> it's, because we do, the we lawsuits do are very reactive. You know, mm -hmm. we react yeah, the lawsuits are reactive. I mean, yeah. law mostly is you know the practice yes. of law is mostly reactive, but um, we do advise HR when we see certain behavior of what mm -hmm. they should do, and then it's up to them to actually put something in place. Um, I know they've been doing a lot of contact orders when there's um allegations of like sexual harassment or some discrimination something like that they do that but um yeah it's up to hr to do that part that's their function mm -hmm. but you don't you're not able to tell them hey like you have to no we do tell them oh you, okay yeah, we tell them mm -hmm. uh, councilman just a reminder to um after the reorg hr now falls on their admin so there is additional um oversight now with mm -hmm. the ba and assistant bas and um yep. i'm sure the, the reporting structure is going to change a little bit you know now that they're under that at that department awesome i think i think it, i think it would be probably very fair to say that there's probably a football analogy here where you know it's like a right it's like a left tackle where you know if they're doing their job correctly you may not know they're doing their job yeah um you know there are a lot of things that do not get escalated and not become bigger problems because with you know with hr and law and you know whoever else may be involved it gets nipped in the butt yeah, you don't get points for, like, the crisis you averted, right? Like, people aren't going to be praising you. They might not know about it, right? But mm -hmm. um, it is, you're right that there probably are a million things that we don't know about behind the scenes, you know. And the only things that get escalated to us, are, you know, that, those are the issues that we raise. But That's, you know, I, <laughs> I think it's like Obama when he, like, averted a fiscal crisis, like, in the mm -hmm. beginning of his term. and yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah, I have a few okay. questions. Um, building off of that, what departments increase the caseloads the most? Mm -hmm. As far as which divisions within the law department? No, no, no. Like other what other cases? municipal departments increase your caseloads, right. whether that's employee uh, I mean, law or... It's, it's, uh, it's, it, 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 it is pretty consistent, uh, and we can actually break it down for everybody if you'd oh. like. Um, okay. it, it's pretty consistent with just the size of the departments. I would say the, vet, the large majority of our stuff is public safety, okay. but that's also, that's also the large majority of our that's employees. True, yeah. um, we have a lot of cases out of DPW. Now, part of that is, well, if you trip and fall over something, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that might be because of something that DPW did or did not do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, then there are other departments that we just don't get a lot out of because they don't have that same liability nexus, I suppose. Um, I think th those would be the big ones. I think, you know, public safety, DPW. Um, yeah, what do, what do you think? No, those are the two. Yeah. That's the two. 
I think that could be like possibly addressed in the employee handbook, you mm -hmm. know, and some of the goals, you know, that would maybe limit the amount of litigation or cases that fall on you or out, even outside counsel. Mm -hmm. So it with the trip and fall stuff, it really wouldn't help, but it would help us with the employment litigation. Mm. It would definitely help us with that. But we, we've already started rolling out the um, EEO training. Nice. Most of the employees are taking it. We started with public safety first. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we, start, we started with them first. That's going back then, to last year, right? Yeah, that's going back to last year. Um, but yeah, we can definitely do that. Um, and then the other issue is discipline. Like We just need people to discipline. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times... You know, everyone wants to be the nice guy. They don't want to discipline. And then if they don't discipline, it doesn't get to law. It doesn't get to human resources. Mm -hmm. And we can't do anything about it. Next thing we know, yeah. we've got this lawsuit saying that whatever has been happening for years. Mm -hmm. And HR didn't know. Law didn't know. We just find out. And then mm -hmm. we have to deal with it. Yeah. That would be the director or division chief's responsibility? Mm -hmm. The supervisors, the directors. Yeah. That's... I mean, obviously, everyone's heard progressive discipline. Well, there's a reason for that because yeah. um, it creates accountability, and you know, it reaches a point where if a if the city or the department or director or division director mm -hmm. knows that there's a problem and does nothing about it, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that's where it becomes very difficult. That's a good point. In terms of the CLE hours, are your lawyers responsible for getting them on their own, paying for them, or is that included in the subscriptions? That's and... part of the subscription. They, okay. they, they are able to get all of the hours they need through that. Mm -hmm. We do have situations, and that's part of the other uh, dues and membership part of the budget, where someone may want to go to a seminar that's very specific to either their field of law or something that they want to learn more about mm -hmm. that is useful to the city. Like we've sent people to, there was a bankruptcy thing we sent somebody okay. to. There's a land use. There's, we're, sending, we're sending our tax attorney to a tax workshop. Um, and those count as both the 12 hours of continu continuing legal ed plus okay. useful knowledge. <laughs> so, and you know, everybody needs that to be admitted. Okay. So it really is kind of the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. I liked your um, your goal to schedule some more meetings with the law department and solicit feedback, but is there any way some of the lawyers in their professional development could give us feedback on emerging trends in municipal codes, ordinances, and say, like, hey, this is a best practice in another mm -hmm. city? Would the council not give us, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, give us some suggestions. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, you know, obviously, we're here to counsel and advise. If you have an idea for an initiative that you want to roll out, we, counsel, we can counsel and advise on that. If we see things that we think are germane to mm -hmm. yeah. you know, certain issues. I think some of those um, legal conferences, they have like emerging trends that they do. They could do. get passed along to us. Like, hey, not telling yeah. you what, how to do your job, but just saying some Correct. cities in our comparable size are doing this. Would you guys uh, want to research, want us to look into it more? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can do. We can keep that door open. And yeah. we can. I'd like to help with the kind of like uh, internship or first year lawyer program. Mm -hmm. Some places work with paralegal certificate places like NJCU offers that, mm -hmm. Hudson County Community College, and there's a place in Union City mm -hmm. um, that's entirely in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And they have paralegals do a first year lawyer um, or just an internship to get their hours. Um, mm -hmm. Could we work on maybe some outreach on what we're already doing with the local law schools yeah. and maybe with some other programs to bring in interns? Uh, yeah. If, if you just, want, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just had a conversation with one of the deans of Seton Hall last week about mm -hmm. bringing in some interns for the fall. Nice. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we are in a position where we can give, it, obviously you have to work with the school to make sure that what they do is worthy, quote unquote, mm -hmm. of right. credit. Uh, educational credit, or there's, you know, people, they can be paid uh, right. as part-time mm -hmm. people, seasonals. Um, you know, we, 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 unfortunately, during the pandemic, our internship program, you know, died yeah. for, for a while. Well, and, uh, died. You know, <laughs> and we do have an intern this summer who's doing an excellent job. Oh, and, she's uh, great. Mm -hmm. All of ours died. Yes. We did. Yeah. <laughs> Any more it, questions? It's the Councilman Soleil internship program. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. We know you need more staff. We're conscious of that. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure y'all. We do. We're very conscious. Yeah. When's your next contract? Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't have contracts. They don't have contracts. We don't. Our secretaries do. Right. But um, the attorneys no. Yeah, I, I, I don't address mm -hmm. salary or anything with our secretarial staff because they are bound by the contract. Contract, right. So they get paid what the contract says. Yes, they get paid. right, right, so. right, right, right. There's a whole big can of worms. Right? <laughs> yes. But we'll get, we'll get through it. All right, and so obviously if anybody has any questions, let me know. Sure. Councilman Gilmore, I'll get that information. Oh, he, he said that. <laughs> okay. Just, we need oh. to just send it to all of us. Yeah. This way he won't sure. be there. Go ahead, Sean. Okay, so may I have a motion to adjourn at 2.46 p.m.? Motion. That was made by Councilperson Prinzeri. May I have a second? Second. Second by Council President Waterman. On the motion to adjourn at 2.46 p.m., all council members present, please, by acclamation, please say aye. Aye. We are out of here at 2.46 p.m. Thank you so much. Five-minute break, guys. Five-minute break. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs>